Uh, good evening and thank you for tuning in to another week with the West Godfield Park Youth Council. And now, of course, you know I'll be your servant leader this evening. I'm Reverend Jones, Executive Director of Fathers Who Care. And I was given an opportunity because of our guest this evening to host this show on behalf of our President and then President Emeritus, uh, none other than Vernicia Jones, who's our President, and David Elam, who's our President Emeritus, and we have Amari, who's our Secretary, and uh, Marshala and Steven, and all of those folks who are officers of the West Garfield Park Youth Council. And I thank them young folks for giving me yet another opportunity to hang out with them. They tell me that I'm cool. So uh, that means something for me that I'm able to hang out with these young folks and they still talk around me, you know. And they don't isolate me, but they allow me to hang out and learn their languages because I be stealing their words. Mm. Uh, yeah, I know what you mean. <laughs> I, I, I literally get the information. I write it down. Right. So, so they tell me I'm Gucci. Okay, Gucci. Which oh, okay. means that which must means, be good. That means I'm cool. Wow, that's good. That's so, good. so I just share that with the group. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, for the purpose of this show, in the next 25 minutes, we're going to be specifically talking about a topic in our community that has always been somewhat swept under the rug, ostracized. Our folks just don't want to admit that we need to empower the least of us. They don't mean they don't want to uh, talk about the formerly incarcerated. They don't want to talk about the fact that anybody can make a mistake, and most of us do. They don't want to talk about that everybody need a chance after they've made a mistake and if they had the chance then we can make this community a better place. Mm -hmm. They don't want to talk about the fact that everybody have gone through some stuff and everybody talk about a second chance, right? Right. right. How they want to help so folks with a second chance here and help folks with a second chance there, but they won't help folks with a second chance in poverty communities. Go figure. <laughs> Go figure. All right. Not in my backyard. You know what I mean? Yeah. Not in our backyard. So what we're here to talk about today, we're, un we're unapologetic about it, and we're talking specifically about the need to empower the least of them, i.e. formerly incarcerated individuals, because they are our children, they are our brothers, they are our sisters, they are our loved ones, and we know that all have come short. The word tells us that all have come short. Uh, and we want to let you guys know out there that in spite of what other folks may think, we love you and we want to bring you some valuable information tonight that if you take advantage of some of these opportunities and some of these resources that's in the community, you can find your way back onto a road of prosperity. You can find your way back onto a road of self-confidence. You can build up that self-esteem again. You don't have to keep feeling about, you got to worry about the past. Hell, the past is what it is. The past, all right? Mm -hmm. So we ain't going to keep pushing the past on you about what you done been through. Hell, we all got a pass, all right? Yes, Let's do. talk. Amen, somebody? Amen. All right, Amen. so we ain't going to keep talking about people's passes because everybody got a pass, just everybody ain't been caught. Right. Yeah. All right. But tonight, for the purpose of empowerment, we want to engage, enlighten, and empower those who have been formerly incarcerated. And we want you to know that we love you. So we're going to specifically talk with our two guests tonight. And we're going to talk... <laughs> Uh, uh, about what we can do and what resources are, are literally available to help uh, uh, individuals who have been formerly incarcerated, have paid their debts to society, so that they won't have to continue to live in the past. Mm -hmm. It's so sad that folks have to live in the past, but that's the nature of the environment we live in. They don't want to let the past, you know, they don't want to let your past leave. They want to keep that past in front of you. But we're saying to you tonight, in spite of what they think, we still believe in that old Philippian uh, statement that if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away and behold, all things become new. We believe that. Yes, we do. So we're going to talk about that and we're going to talk about what we can do to empower you good people out there, uh, good brothers and sisters on tonight's show. So Reverend, before I do that, let me, let me, let me just take a few minutes to kind of introduce our guests. We, of course, y'all see these two gentlemen on the side of me and I know they fired up ready to go and they ready to talk about some of the good things that we're gonna do uh, or what we're doing over at the St. Leonard's ministry particularly the Barlow Center is that correct the Michael Barlow Center. the Michael Barlow Center and so who are we who, who, who do we have here well my name is Eric Quartz and you are I am a resident of the west side of Chicago right um, born and raised graduate of Westinghouse High School um, attended DePaul University, mm -hmm. um, where I did my undergrad, and now uh, did my master's at mm -hmm. Concordia University. Okay, um, has a, have a special place in my heart. 
for serving people. Okay. Um, and I do that in a, a number of ways. The first way I do it is my involvement with youth. Okay. I run a AAU program. Uh, where we That's try basketball. That is basketball. The traveling league. Yes, it is. Right. But we travel the country and we play in front of college coaches and we expose youth to outside of Chicago. Okay. Um, in addition to that, my other passion is helping people. Okay. And helping people, uh, specifically formerly incarcerated people. So, so I, you have a job over at, at this facility at correct. the Michael Ballo Center. Correct. What do you do there? I am the employment specialist. Okay. Now we're gonna come back if you don't mind. That's right. I'd like to come back and 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 and, and just specifically ask you what is the Michael Ballo Center? Mm -hmm. What are services of the Michael? If you don't mind. I got you. And so I like to come back. But what I like to do now is, if you don't mind, I like to talk to Peter. All right. And and, and you're Peter, right? Pete. Yeah. You're Pete yes, or sir. Peter. Pete. Yes, sir. Pete. I so my name is Paul, but they call me Pete. Okay, All so Pete. Yeah. Pete. Pete who? Baker. Pete Baker. And Great. you are what? I am the construction skills coordinator, uh, construction skills program director at the Michael Barlow Center. And and what's your purpose? My purpose is similar to Eric. My passion is helping people who need help. Okay. Um, who come to me for help? Who come to the Barlow Center for help? Um, my uh, one of my biggest passions is building. I, I've built all my life. I've been 48 years a contractor and carpenter, well, 48 years a carpenter and practically 30 years a contractor. Um, for the past 11 years, I've, I've been at St. Leonard's Ministries. Mm -hmm. um, I'm father of five, grandfather of eight, and great grandfather of one. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm just trying to move along in life now that at this stage of my life, give back to the community, mm -hmm. give back to the people, and um, see if we can see if we can just help people move along and and just move forward in their lives. So, have you ever been incarcerated? Um, I have been incarcerated. Yes. Mm. How about you? I have not been incarcerated. Okay. So you know you know personally how if if folks don't have the personal skills that they need to develop certain skills. Mm -hmm. Correct. Right. Mm -hmm. And I personally think is I just believe it's just my opinion. Mm -hmm. But I believe it's not not that I don't believe in academics. Mm -hmm. I think it has its place. Mm -hmm. I just believe in entrepreneurship. Okay. Or I believe in people having specialized skills. Yeah. Right. All yeah. right. Right. So and, and now that incarceration, I think that's I, I understand people have to go through what they have to go through. I don't personally think incarcerating is a downfall for some. I think it's a blessing for some. It is. All right. So, yes. All right. Because I think some folks need to have to get away. And when God want to talk to someone, he has to take you someplace. Mm -hmm. All right. And so sometimes it ain't cool to just be at home. Sometimes you have to take a vacation. <laughs> it yeah. is what it is. All right. Correct. I've had, <laughs> right? I've had some residents of St. Leonard's Ministries who are formerly incarcerated. Yeah. Uh, just tell me that was the best thing that ever happened to me because I really needed to be shown. Yeah. yeah. You know, like a drug addict wrong. need to detox, right? Exactly. Correct. Yeah. And so sometimes folks who may not have their proper vision or have their mission in order mm -hmm. or their purpose for why they do what they do or their existence, they need to find it. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sure. And, and, it, and they need to be somewhere what it that they can find themselves mm -hmm. but anyway let's get into the show <laughs> but anyway on this show we want to ask some questions and we want to say some things and share some information on how can we can empower each other listen you're watching for uh forgive me the west godfrey park youth council the number here is 312-738-1060 the topic tonight is how can we as community stakeholders bless the least of them yeah so we're talking about all of us because I think it takes a village to raise our children. Mm -hmm. And I believe young people can't be what they can't see. And young people think it's hip to go to jail. They do. They, they, they actually believe that's a badge yeah, of honor, unfortunately. To, unfortunately. But they don't quite understand that uh, when you know better, you do better. Mm -hmm. But if you get caught up and you happen to have to take that vacation, it ain't the end of the world. All right? Yeah. right. It's just a step. All right? Mm -hmm. So we want to encourage young folks who have not been involved in the penal system to try not to get involved in the penal system. Mm -hmm. But if you have been involved uh, in the system, we want you to know that there is still hope for you, there is still assistance for you, and, and folks like like you two good guys here uh, over at the St. Leonard's Ministry uh, Baller Center, uh, there at Michael Baller Center, are there to provide whatever type of support that they can, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. That you all can. Mm -hmm. So let's, 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 let's get into some few questions if you're on the mind. Now, I, I believe I'm a community stakeholder, you guys are community stakeholders, but what can we do as community stakeholders to empower the least of them. Let's for the purpose of tonight, when we're talking about least of them, let's just put it out there. Right. We're talking about who? 
formerly incarcerated okay. men and women. So we're saying tonight, for the purpose of tonight, when we talk about the least of them, we specifically talking about those who are formerly incarcerated. Formerly incarcerated. So what can we do as community stakeholders and others out there who may be community stakeholders or sector partners, what can we do to empower those who have been formerly incarcerated? Well, I believe that the biggest thing that we can do and what we already do is okay. um, encourage our brothers and sisters, encourage them to get into programs okay. like the St. Leonard's Michael Barlow Center, um, who's there to help provide that second chance. We not only help with um, providing programming, but we also help with just counseling. Like sometimes people just need somebody to talk to, and, and we're very good at, at doing that. Okay. And we've been successful. Um, and ultimately, you know, and I'll wait for later, but, you know, as a stakeholder in the community, you want to see your brothers and sisters um, excel. So we want to see them change from the old and go to the new. Mm -hmm. So in order for that to happen, we have to encourage, we have to um, identify um, those identify. needs. Okay. And after we identify, encourage. Okay. I like that. How about you, Pete? Well, as a stakeholder in the community, for me, it's what I could do is give back give what, back. what okay. I've um, what I've accomplished, mm -hmm. what I've learned uh, throughout my life. Um, give back, especially to those who need the help, who come and ask for it. Mm -hmm. um, that's how I plan to spend the rest of my life. I'm actually I'm retired. Um, but they they asked me to come back to St. Leonard's. Because you have too. a passion for the work. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's <laughs> what exactly it. Is. it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they started a whole new program there, and they asked me to come back to to develop and direct that program and to teach it. And so that's you know it's just a, it's a just a, a golden opportunity for me to be able to do what I I feel what you I love want doing. To do. Yeah, you know your purpose and you you know what you're called to do, right? Correct. Yeah. And you yeah. find so much joy in doing it. It's yeah. really not oh, a yeah. job for you. It's a passion. Right. Right. Yep. Right. right. So, so let me ask this about the guys uh, in the Michael Barlow Center or, or the St. Leonard's Ministry. Mm -hmm. Tell me about the St. Leonard's Ministry and the Barlow Center. So what, what, what is the St. Leonard's Ministry? And then how, how can one, who, who is that ministry for? And how can one become a part of that? So the unique thing about um, St. Leonard's Ministries and the Michael Barlow Center is we only service people with backgrounds. Whoa, 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 whoa. Back up. What? We only service people with criminal backgrounds. Exclusively. Whoa, whoa, Exclusively. whoa, whoa, whoa. So wait a minute. You're telling me that St. Leonard's uh, and the Barlow Center only deals with or provide intervention for folks who have been formally incarcerated. Correct. Oh, okay, go ahead. Okay. okay. Wow. It's yeah. the only qualification. It wow. Is the qualification. Okay. So St. Leonard's Ministries was founded in 1954 by Episcopalian priests um, who used to go into Cook County Jail. He was a chaplain. And what he found was when people got out of jail, um, they didn't have anywhere to go. And as a result, um, they ended up committing crimes again and going back into prison. Okay. So what he decided to do, him and his wife, mm -hmm. was start to take those people in. And that became what we now call St. Leonard's House. Eventually, they bought property. Um, Where? Where's and that Leonard? property is on Warren and Hoyne. Okay. So 2100 uh, West Warren. Okay. That's where you'll find the original uh, St. Leonard's house. Okay. And and he they brought that house and they eventually started taking people in. And what they found was housing was a barrier because if they didn't have anywhere to stay, then it's like that's the people that was formerly incarcerated. The formerly okay. incarcerated right. people. Okay. So when they didn't have anywhere to stay, they ended up recommitting crimes and ended up back in jail. So the first thing is for housing. We do provide housing for formerly incarcerated men and women. Okay. Um, in fact, ninety-seven percent of our uh, residents are from the Illinois Department of Corrections. Whoa, whoa, whoa. So you're saying that folks who are currently incarcerated, when they get out, they, they come straight to St. Leonard's? They come straight to St. Leonard's. Because so, I heard you say 97%. Yep. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Now, there is that 3% that, that might walk in off the street that's been out already, but might need some help. And if they meet the qualifications, you Which know, is? In those qualifications, it's a process. So they do application. Um, but primarily, they have to have they a gotta, record. They got to have a record. Exactly. <laughs> you, you must have a record. That's okay. The number one. Now, the other, one, the other is just intake stuff. Right. 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 But you got to have a record. Okay. So you come, you come in, and, and, and if you qualify, 
I mean, and the bid is available, then we're able to get you in and take you through programming. Okay. Oh, so, so, so that's that's about uh, St. Leonard's. Mm -hmm. So now tell me about the Barlow Center. Well, the Michael Barlow Center um, came about about 15 years ago. 2005, yeah, it opened up. Yep. Okay. So 2005, the Michael Barlow Center opened up. And the Michael Barlow Center is our education and training facility. Okay, so so you're watching right now the West Godfrey Park Youth Council. Of course, our guest this evening is Eric and Pete, and we're talking specifically about services provided at the Barlow Center, which, which is a, 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 a program and, and activity of programs of the St. Leonard's Ministry. Correct. And what we're trying to do tonight is let those who, who are watching, those who maybe have been formerly incarcerated, those who may think that folks have uh, 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 forgot about you or that you just really need an opportunity or a second chance or somebody to be compassionate to you, we're trying to encourage those of you who have been formerly incarcerated and in need of some loving support during this holiday season. By the way, happy holiday. We want you to know that St. Leonard House and i.e. the Baller Center is waiting on you to give you an opportunity for an intake, an assessment, and possibly some opportunities at that facility. Is that fair? That is fair. So let's go next. So what are some of the services, what are some of the services that are provided at the Baller Center? Can we talk about that? Yes, we can. So ultimately, um, there's two forms. So we have the educational part, which is we are the only accredited adult high school in probably the state of Illinois. Mm -hmm. So we're not a GED program, but we are literally an adult high school program. So they receive their high school diploma. They receive a no. high school diploma. Diploma. Mm -hmm. Cap and gown graduation yearbook. They take the Constitution test. Mm -hmm. And so during that time, um, they go through our high school program, they're able to succeed. We also have on the employment training side, we have our Road to Success program, which is our two-week employment training program. Mm -hmm. Now, let me pause and say all of our services are absolutely free. What? They're absolutely free. There is no cost. We want you to come. We want you to change your life. So the, the programs here at, at the Baller Center, i.e. up under St. Leonard's Ministry, are free. Absolutely free. So folks won't get up in there and then you come and talk about where's your medical card? Yeah, there, there's no secret cost. <laughs> okay, well, <laughs> no hidden cost. <laughs> okay. No, okay. no hidden cost. Medicaid, Medicare, give yeah. me your sign off on this. No, no, no. There's, there's no secret cost. Okay. Absolutely free. Um, and you come in and we, we have multiple programs. Our Road to Success program is, desi is designed to help you prepare for employment. Okay. Ultimately, we want you to get into careers. But we also have training programs that also prepares you for those careers. Listen, we got a caller. Can we take a few calls? Yes, we that, can. The way we work here is, you know, as folks are watching, some are listening and mm -hmm. some are taking notes. Mm -hmm. But some are watching and some may want to call and ask a question. Is that okay? That is great. Thank you for calling. Caller, your comment or question, please. You're talking to, uh, you're talking to Eric and you're talking to Pete. And these are both gentlemen from uh, the Michael Barlow Center uh, in conjunction with uh, St. Leonard's House on the west side of Chicago. Give us your comment or question, please. Uh, hello. Good evening, gentlemen. How are you doing? Great. Hey, thank you. Uh, my name is David. I'm an a active member on the west side of Chicago, and I have a question for all three of you. Um, I notice you all are community stakeholders in the community, so my question to you all is what drives you and motivates you to keep educating, enlightening, and empowering young people? Mm. So who would like to take that first? Go ahead. Uh, you know, Go ahead, Pete. not to be too simple, but mm -hmm. it's love. It's, mm -hmm. uh, it's love for, our, for your brothers, love for your sisters, uh, love for people who need help, um, a love for the act of helping people. Um, that's, what, that's what drives me. It's just, it's just a passion to help people. Okay, and you, Eric? Yeah, well, I'll, I'll follow Pete with, with love, uh, but it's also my life story. So, you know, I grew up on the west side of Chicago. Um, I've seen a lot of things. I've been through a lot of things. Um, and, and that has kind of configured my life and, and made me make decisions on how I want to give back to my community. And I give back by helping people um, with backgrounds. Well, and, and, I, and I just will say this, I, I'm so thankful to be sitting here with individuals who really have a love for what we do. Mm -hmm. and, and we don't do it because of the money. 
we would love to get paid, don't get me wrong. However, because we got families and things to do too. But we do the work because we really love uh, what we do and we want to be a beacon of light and we want to be some support to those who need our assistance. Mm -hmm. But we do want you to know those who are watching tonight that, you know, stop. Stop letting people dictate that it can't work for you, that it can't happen for you, that you got to keep on living in this past or you got to keep living in the shadows. We're saying to you right now that there are individuals and resources out here to empower you, and we want you to give uh, the Michael Barlow Center. Uh, and St. Leonard's uh, Ministry an opportunity. Call it, you on the air, you'll come in a question, please. Okay, so let's do, go to the next one. So we was talking about some of the services. So let's go back and just ask this specific question. But, but let me do this. Tonight at, at, at Columbus Park, the congressman is doing his annual Christmas party. Huge party at Columbus Park. Going over there, I think the party is to 9 o'clock. And then this, tomorrow, Friday, we'll be doing a Christmas celebration uh, at George Leland School where we'll be giving uh, hat scarves and gloves and coats to young people. Mm -hmm. The students over at George Leland, and we'll be giving uh, uh, toys out to the young people, fathers who care in the West Garfield Park Youth Council, West Garfield Park Community Stateholders. Come on down tomorrow at George Leland uh, from one to three, and tonight, <coughs> excuse me, tonight at the uh, at the Columbus Park from six to nine, and Sunday. We're going to be doing an event at the By the Hand in collaboration with Congressman Davis, where Congressman Davis is going to present. Uh, uh, Academy Day, where he's going to present scholarships or activities or opportunities to scholarships to young folks in all the armed services. Nice. So anyone interested in the Marines, the Army, the the Merchant Marine, or the Air Force, or whatever these other, you know. Branches. Branches, thank branches. you. That was it. I Other it. branches. Uh, <laughs> you know what I mean. Anyway, that's going to happen on Sunday uh, at By the Hand. And the congressman will be there and others will be there. And we're going to be talking to young people, asking young people if you want to join the Coast Guard, the Air Force, the Marines, the Army, or the Navy, or whatever that branch of, of, of service you would like to be involved in. Come on out. And also, we will be talking about the Congressional, uh, the Black Congressional Caucus Scholarships. So those who are trying to go to college and need a little help, come on out. This is your week. We're going to be a blessing to you. But now let's get the next call. Did we have a caller? No? So let's go to now. We're going to go back to uh, Eric and we're going to go back to Pete. So tell us, Eric, what do you do and how can folks, if folks wanted to get in your program, mm -hmm. that's construction. Construction skills. If they wanted to be involved in that, what does that mean? What does construction skills mean? And, and how, how can they get actively involved in what you're doing? Well, um, the first step that they would do is to visit the Barlow Center on an orientation day. Okay. Or they could actually just call and they will tell them when the orientation and is. And these are for what kind of individuals? For formerly incarcerated individuals. I just want to make sure that we're on the same page. <laughs> Exclusively. All right. yeah. Okay, okay. Um, and they're so free. The, it's all free. Okay, just want to stay focused. Right, you know, yeah. I'm slow, it's, but I ain't that slow. I am too. <laughs> <laughs> I know but, what uh, free means. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we all do, <laughs> for sure. Um, so our orientation is at uh, at the Barlow Center on the near west side, 2120 right. West uh, Warren, yeah. at 3 o'clock Wednesday yeah. afternoon okay. at 10 a.m. Friday morning. So give me a number. Give me a number to the bar. So if the, if the guys wanted to make a phone call tomorrow uh, or something, what, what number would they call? Probably uh, the 312... We have a few numbers. Let me get the go ahead. Take it, okay. take, it, take it with you. Okay, uh, three one two eight nine four seven nine seven five seven nine seven five. Correct. So that's three one two eight nine four seventy nine seventy five. Correct. So if they interest, all they have to do is call that number. Yep. Yep. And tell them what they want to do. Right. Tell them that they've been formerly incarcerated, mm -hmm. in need of some of these free services. Mm -hmm. Correct. Anything else you want to share about that? Well, they, they can come in and, uh, like Eric said, there's a, there's a number of uh, programs they can choose from. We have a culinary arts, we have the 18-week construction skills program, which is a basic and an advanced program. Eight week of basic, ten weeks in a, of advanced. Um, I could explain more of that if you'd like or we could wait on that. But well, I, just tell them if they, if, you know, just tell uh, them to give you a call. Yeah. And, but we're okay. going to go back to you and ask you what do what do you do and what can they what do, if they was interested in. Now let me say, now let's stop. To, let's cut through the chase. After all of this good training and stuff, well, what's the expected outcome? Gainful employment. 
Gainful um, employment. It is a fact that gainful employment reduces recidivism. Okay. Right. Pe people who get jobs and have productive and prosperous lives. So do they have do case managers, all of that kind of stuff? Yes. Over yes. there? Yes. yes. Okay. So do they have social workers and stuff over there? Yes. So if folks, if a folks, if there's some guys maybe having some mental issues or going through some challenges, do they have folks who can address their social emotional needs? We do yes. have Adler Psychological Services okay. as well. We have parenting. Uh, they go through a, a drug alcohol rehab, a drug, mm -hmm. alcohol, drug alcohol substance abuse uh, rehab, relapse prevention. We're pretty much a holistic service. Yeah. We're one of the bigger reentry programs in the country. Wow. So now we're talking to, to, to uh, Eric and Pete, and we're talking about the services provided over there at St. Leonard's House, particularly Michael uh, uh, Ballos at the Michael Ballos Center. Mm -hmm. And we want to encourage those who are watching who have been formally, we don't want to even talk to nobody else tonight unless you have been formally in custody. We're, 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 we're serious tonight. We're specific tonight. We want to talk to our brothers and sisters, who, but this is just for men and women. Both. So we want to talk to our brothers and sisters who have been actually going through some stuff, and we want you to know that opportunities are available for you at, at the St. Leonard's House uh, Ministries uh, and the Michael, Michael Barlow Center. So for more additional information about that, give them a call at 312 eight nine four seven nine seven five we want to wish you all a happy holidays the time on the wall is telling us that we have to go you know next week is that holiday season remember jesus is the reason for this season it's not about kmart walmart and none of those marks but it's all about trying to be a blessing to the least of them so let's touch and touch agree and believe that we can help one another but let's think first thing let's do let's really love each other and not talk about each other because we're all in the same thing together listen it's been a stone guys we appreciate Appreciate that, uh, Eric. We want to thank you, Pete. We want to thank you, thank you, uh, uh, Felicia. We want to thank you, and all thank of those good Felicia. people over over there at St. Leonard's Ministry. We want to thank you all for all the good work that you're doing for our men and women out here. I want to thank those young folks on the West Garfield Park Youth Council. It's, youth Council. It's time now for me to get up and get out there with them because they're gonna keep me running for a few more hours, and I love hanging out with them. But it's been fun. Thank all of you all for what you've been doing. Listen, keep doing the good work, and we'll see you next week. God bless you. Good night and keep the faith and we'll see you when we see you. Bless you and good night.